Welcome to Red and April Off Grid. We are building a passive design home in the beautiful Arizona desert. Give us a thumbs up and subscribe to follow our journey to a simpler and more efficient lifestyle. Picking it up where we left off last time, April's working on insulation and I'm working on drywall. I'm working over in the pantry area, finished up the inside and I'm working on the outside and at the moment I'm working on the frame around the door. So some of the doors in the house will have a regular wooden door that swings open and closed, but some of the door openings we will not use a door, we'll use a curtain. And for those openings I will drywall in the opening and so that's what I'm doing here. I'm putting some drywall, lining the door in drywall and then I'm putting these metal corner pieces in so that I can have a nice crisp sharp corner. Then you just fill it in with mud. Here's what it looked like with the first coat and it's ready for sanding. Here's a little bit of what April's up against installing this ceiling insulation. She has to fit it in through these beams. It's a really hard and messy job for sure. I'm moving on to installing the framing above this concrete wall and I wanted to do something a little special here. So the wood that you can see there along the bottom and the top and the sides will, I want that to be exposed permanently. I don't want it covered in drywall, but I want drywall blocking this opening above the concrete wall. And so what I did was I, the framing that I put in is inset a half an inch on either side so that the drywall I put in will be flush with the face of the wood, leaving the wood exposed. April and I made a trip to Tucson. We wanted to look for used building supplies and we actually had found something on Facebook Marketplace that we bought. And then we also made a trip to two local stores, Gerson's and Originate. We found a lot of good stuff, but probably the stuff I'm most excited about was the doors. We found three antique doors. Here's one of them here and a nice vintage door. Really excited about these doors. We decided to go with all used doors in the house. It saves a lot of money and adds interest to the home, and then plus I just really like restoring things. I love old doors. The door I'm carrying in now is a nice heavy-duty solid wood vintage door. It has a really cool pattern on the front. It has a little detail scrolling that you can see there, but I love this kind of swirl pattern as it makes this ring around the block in the middle and it repeats that top and bottom. I want to use this on our front door. We also had bought a door previously that we were thinking about using as a front door that we'll probably move to the bedroom. So the, what the guy is recommending is a swing joint, which is a setup where you have, you kind of go over sideways and come back in so that mm. if there is movement, the elbows could take it up, you know. But I remember now, I think about it, just remembering back to hooking up the propane or you know, getting the propane hooked up on our trailer houses, you had to have a flex line. I now recall that they wanted to flex line between the yard line and the house. You know, I'd originally hooked up this propane line directly with just 90 and came straight into the house and some viewers uh, noticed that from a previous video and recommended that I put in a swing joint or did something to fix that because it's a hazard in the case of an earthquake or some kind of a settlement it could put strain on the pipe and then you know cause the pipe to break or leak and that was actually a really good comment uh, I appreciate that that's something that I had forgotten about and it was an oversight on my part a mistake so I, I went right out and fixed it. it it was bothering me and and so anyway this is me just soon after we got that comment actually going out and fixing it I decided to put in a flexible line here instead of a swing joint just because it was easier and I had all the parts at hand but this will serve the same purpose and allow the line to flex in case of movement. I'm not sure if this is the technically the proper way to do it definitely check the codes in the, your area if you're going to be doing it for yourself but this will work for me. Well, back to drywall. Here I am in the pantry and I'm doing the final sanding on the second application. So this is the final sanding before we're ready to paint in here. So looking forward to having this done and being, being able to cross this little room off my list. The second sanding always goes a lot faster and I finished that up pretty quickly and was ready to move on to hanging drywall in the bathroom. Of course, the bathroom here adjoins the pantry that I was just working on. This is a tight space with a lot of uh, relatively tight space. It's actually a pretty big bathroom, but there's a lot of bins and corners and stuff to work around. And I'm about to tackle the closet, which I'm definitely dreading. Closets are always a, a huge pain and I'm I dread working on them because they're they're just tight and hard to get into. This particular closet has the manifold in it for the the water manifold and the water heater already in it. So I can't hardly even stand up in there. It's really tight. I have to use a step ladder to even get in there. So I've cut the piece for the ceiling, got the hole for the light, and I'm about to 
squeeze into this little bathroom closet here uh, with all the other stuff that's already in there and try to get it put in place. And I'm trying to get my chair or my stepping stool in there. It's kind of dark in there. Here I am trying to make sure it fits and it's going to work. It's a really tight space. It's hard to even get it up. I have to lean over sideways, get my head out of the way. I'm finally able to get it up and sure enough, take it back out, recut some things, tweak on it a little bit, finally get it to where it fits. Uh, second or third try is the charm. I'm using a new tool here. It's a little cutout tool that's made for drywall to help me cut out the small, small holes for the outlet boxes. And continuing hanging drywall in the bathroom. I'm working around the sink here. I put this sink in here temporarily so that we could have to wash our hands in and stuff, but it's been a pain. I wanted to go ahead and get the drywall in behind the sink, so I've had to remove it like twice to put the drywall in behind it and reattach it. It's been quite the, quite the ordeal. April's been working on the insulation. You can see here a good example of the pains that she goes through to make sure it's fit properly. So she's taken some time to cut out around that wire so that she doesn't just squish the insulation over it and bunch up the insulation. When you do that, it loses its effectiveness. And so not only around wires does she cut it so that it fits around them real nice, but if the piece is a little bit too long, she trims it and she never bunches up the insulation. And she always just takes her time and makes sure everything fits properly and it's all fluffed up because it needs to be fluffed and loose in order for it to have its full effect. She's making good progress. Here's a shot of one of the walls in the guest bedroom completed. It's looking nice. While she's working on that, I'm continuing my drywall work. I'm actually working in the bathroom and you can see the electrical panel there. This area that I'm working in right now is kind of the entrance to the bathroom and where you can enter the bathroom for the, from the bedroom or the living area. So it's kind of almost like a hallway or an antechamber to the bathroom. So technically the electric box is in the hallway. One of the last steps to finishing the pantry is actually to finish the floors. So we need to finish all of the concrete floors in the house and then we're going to seal them instead of trying to put something over the top of them. And so this was our first opportunity to test our method and experiment a little bit. So I bought the proper tool, which is a big disc sander. This is a nice Makita sander that was well rated. I really like it. You can see it's, it's taking care of the dust really nicely. It's actually sucking up a lot of the drywall dust as it's sanding and all the du own dust that it's making. Normally it would just be visibility would be nil if that vacuum cleaner wasn't hooked. So it's good dust management. The Makita also had a lower RPM capability, which I liked. Um, a lot of the other big disc grinders were much faster, which, which isn't good. The slower speed allowed me to have more control. I'm opening up a box of LED recessed lighting that we bought for the house. They don't use much power, they're only 12 watts, but I've never used these before, so I'm trying to figure them out, just checking them out. They're really thin, and they're about the thickness of the drywall itself, and then they have a little control box that I'll need to mount in there first. Here it is. It's really a, seems to be a well-built piece of equipment. These are really nice connections that'll make it easy. I had to install this box before I could install our next piece of drywall so it'd be ready once we got it in place. So here you can see us. We're using the lift for the first time uh, to get a full piece up. It's wonderful. This lift is amazing. It makes it so easy. It's, it's really cool. You can get it exactly where you want it and it just holds it up there while you take your leisurely time to go around and put screws in. Wonderful device. I'm so glad we brought this. So in this piece that we just put up, there's a hole for that LED light and I'll be putting that in next. So because I'd already mounted the box, the plug was coming out. I just made that connection, clipped it in, which was really fast and easy, and then tried to make sure it, it worked, and, and it did. So we're good to move on to the next piece. The next roof piece was also for the bathroom and also had a light that will be installed. So I had to install that box, get it all cut and prepped, and then use the lift to put it up into place. That worked out really well. After that, it was back to the pantry. April's been working on painting, and so she got that all painted up. It looks really nice in there. It's nice gray on the walls and white on the ceiling. I'm installing the light fixture. Pretty soon we'll have the light done. And then it was off to Lowe's to get some shelving. We decided to go with a adjustable shelving system on this wall and fill this whole wall up with, with shelves that we can adjust to whatever height we want. 
So I put in three rails on studs that we can attach the hangers to in any position that we like. And I'm, I'm trying to com make accommodation for five shelves on this wall. These are pretty easy to mount. You just line them up with the two by four underneath and then screw them in in several locations with heavy duty screws into that two by four. And then they're very stout. We decided on the locations that we wanted the shelves and put those in. So for shelving, I just went with uh, one by 12s, just kind of picked through the lumber and found some nice looking wood. One by 12s, didn't finish it or do anything to it. It was already ready, really nice and smooth. Right width for these hangers that we're using. So put those in place. And then I just had to screw, put a few short screws in from underneath to keep them from moving. April later came back and added some clear protecting the other shelves, I just used the prefabricated L brackets, also mounted onto studs, and made the top level match height all the way around, and it really turned out sharp. I, I love the look of these shelves in here. And here's a little better shot of the shelves in there. So we have five shelves on the one side. The other two walls don't have as many shelves because we're going to be putting in a small freezer right up against that back wall. And then on the side wall, we'll have a bookshelf that will also serve as extra shelving that we'll be putting in there. Finally, I needed to add a little access door for the plumbing of the tub in the guest bathroom. Just want to be able to get back there in case there's ever a leak. So I added a door in there that'll work just fine. We found some low VOC sealer that we liked and applied it to the concrete. April made two applications and it seemed to seal up real nice. We like the way it looks. It darkened the concrete a little bit. We like the look of the grind too. The floor looks really nice. And decided to go ahead and remove these bolts that were sticking out of this concrete wall just because they're in the way and get caught on things. So I'm using a high speed electric die grinder with a thin cutoff disc and it's doing a great job. It just buzzes through these in no time and I can get really close to the concrete and make a pretty smooth cut. Finished up hanging drywall in the bathroom. It's looking pretty different in there. It's looking nice. We decided to go ahead and test fit the tub, which we picked up on our trip to Tucson. April's moving ahead of me into the bedroom to do the insulation. You can see this time she's suited up in a full body suit that really helps out with this. Keeps the insulation from getting on her near as much. April takes her time to make sure that each piece is placed in properly and fitting tight against all the edges. You don't want any gaps in between the beams or in between the different pieces of insulation because heat can transfer through those gaps. So she tries to make sure everything is tight. So as she puts this in, she's tucking it in, making sure it's good and tight up against the beams. You can see that she stapled together the vapor barrier, mostly to make sure that the two pieces are tight up against each other and that there's no gap. In this particular section up against a wall, it's more narrow than most, so she has to cut the pieces. So she's, having, she's using scissors to cut those precisely to fit. I decided it's time to go and hook up the water to the cooler. We've had the fan going and that's been plenty. We actually haven't needed any cooling. The house has been pretty nice. But with all this work with insulation and April being in that full body suit, we needed a little bit more. And so we decided to hook up the water. The reason I hadn't done it sooner is because I had, I'd had some trouble with the fitting. I had a hose bib that I thought was specially made for this and that would work. And then I got out here to do it and it didn't work anyway. A little bit of trouble there, but I finally got it and we got it going. It was like 10.30 in the morning and 76 degrees in the house when we started the cooler. And then we just got back to work and we'll come back later and see how it's doing. Well, that cooler is definitely helping. We have this window here open, so we're getting a lot of nice air movement through there. April's working on this hot and nasty job here, getting piecing in this insulation. This is that section that I was telling you about that was smaller that she has to cut the pieces for. So as you can see, she's cutting and fitting in here. On the regular beams, there, it's four foot spacing and they fit in between perfectly in the pre-cut bats. But on this one side, she had to cut every one. April actually reads instructions. So she read on the package and it, it said that this insulation needs to be fluffed up. So when it comes, it's really compressed and you have to physically pull it apart and fluff it up in order to get it to the right width. So it performs effectively. So she read that and she's been doing it on every one. She pulls it, fluffs it up. And so when she puts it in there, it's, it's expanding to fill the entire space. Well, it's been a couple of hours and it's warmer outside, but it's actually cooler inside with that evaporative cooler going. It's down to 74 degrees and holding. Another thing of note is that the humidity has gone up a little bit in the house since we've been running the cooler, but it's still on the dry side of things. Still actually considered dry. Well, I messed up and put the drywall up around the tub when I shouldn't have. The hardy board goes on directly onto the stud, so I had to remove some of these drywall that I'd put up 
and then I'm kind of fixing that and finishing up one wall here. So I'm having to do a little bit of rework in the bathroom here. I'm moving on to applying the fiberglass tape to the joints in preparation of doing the mudding. So I'm just taping up the corners and the joints. Pretty soon I'll be applying the mud. April's been working ahead of me. She's almost got all the insulation up in the guest bedroom here. Won't be long before she's finished up with that and I can start hanging drywall in there. Well, I'm actually applying the mud in the bathroom and you can see April's working on the insulation out here. It's really been a challenge to apply this insulation because we really need to start on the lower side of the house and work our way up the ceiling in one continuous movement so that we don't get a gap between the insulation layers. You know, we can just put one piece after the other and keep them really tight on up. And so you can see she's working on this, this run in between this particular set of beams as she goes on up. So one thing that she's doing as she goes along here, and it's a little bit hard to see, but she's putting in little pieces of insulation on top of the beam, in between the beam and the sheeting, and that little space in between the purlins. So that's just like a little inch and a half by three inch space, but she's even filling those up and making, making sure that it's all really nice, tight, and full. Well, here's what the bathroom looks like with the first coat of mud applied. I've got that metal corner pieces on all the outside corners and that includes around the inside door to the closet. Patched up all the nail holes. Just kind of as a side note, this bathroom is actually a lot roomier than we expected. You know, in person when you're in here, it's just bigger than we expected. It's got nice tall ceilings and the just the floor plan is a lot more open than we expected. It's really nice. I moved into the guest bedroom and April didn't get a lot of footage of this. She was doing other stuff, but it went really fast. I got the whole roof done. And it's just because it's so easy with that lift. I mean, it just makes it go fast. You're putting up nearly full sheets and the lift is just super easy. So the, the roof just flew by. And now I'm piecing in uh, some of the wall pieces. This is actually going really nice. I'm enjoying this. It's much more open than the bathroom. It really feels like a vacation compared to the bathroom. Moving on to the wall between the guest bedroom and the bathroom there. And I'm looking at this little section over by this door. April had a great idea to do something special with this area and make a little accent wall with some materials that we already had on hand. So we'll get back to that later. But moving on to the closet now, I'm dreading this, have another closet. These closets are a lot of work. They feel like they're an entire room all in and of themselves, but I've got it mostly drywalled in. I'm actually getting the light in the closet working. I try to get the lights working pretty soon. Number one, just to make sure that everything's okay and they work right, but it's also nice just to have a light that I can turn on and use to do the rest of the work in there. April just had a little bit of insulation left on this final wall of the guest bedroom, and then I'm ready to start drywalling. This is the, the last wall in this room. It's exciting to be almost done with the guest bedroom now. Had a nice, almost full sheet to put up here. This borders that concrete wall. And now I'm going to work my way around this window here. Hanging drywall in gen general has always been kind of a dreaded task for me. It's never been something that I enjoy, but I'm actually learning to like it better. Uh, com you know, hanging the drywall itself has, is actually pretty nice compared to, you know, sanding and applying the mud. So <laughs> I've actually got to the point now where I, I look forward to the hanging drywall part and, and dread the rest of it. Here you can see I've left a, a spot blank that will do that accent thing that we talked about earlier and just kind of pan all around. I need to do that little bit above the concrete wall and the little bit on top in this one last section. So I'm almost done. One thing I've learned too is when I go around these windows, I, I've started just doing a single piece on either side then filling in the spot that's the width of the window with a separate piece. I used to try to use full pieces kind of in sequence and flow all the way across and I've learned that it's best not to do that. Well, overall making good progress. I'm starting the sand on the bathroom and the bedroom is just about finished up and ready for some application of mud. So it's coming along nice. So here is a quick garden update. The garden is doing very well. Everything's really growing fast now. We're starting to get some little squash and then also lots of radishes and radish greens. The beans are all the way to the top of the trellis now. The zucchini plant is huge and the okra are finally getting big enough that I'll probably start uncovering them. They're showing a little bit of bug damage, so we'll have to see what we can do about that. The cucumber is doing great. Squash and zucchini. We just got a cage around the tomato plant. These cherry tomato plants get really big and bushy, so hopefully that will help keep it contained some. 
and this zucchini is just so thick it's going to be really hard to get in there and pick just getting little ones so far and this crookneck squash is interesting i've got some diatomaceous earth in there just to be sure there's just so many little little squash coming on that they're not fully ripening so i've been trying to pick some of those off and eat them but this one the plant is a lot smaller but it's just really putting on a lot of squash and there's the tomato we have already picked quite a few of the radishes and been eating the radish greens let some sunflowers come up in here the butternut squash is doing really well. It's spread from side to side and going across the top. And here it is from the other side. These are the spaghetti squash. They're starting to really grow. We have some potatoes over here, a pepper. Planted a few flowers along here. I've been trying to pull up some of the grass, but getting quite a bit of that coming up. I'm leaving some in the walkways, just using the edger on that. So this garden is planted with all native soil. I've got some topsoil from around the mesquite trees, which seems to be really rich stuff. The plants do great in it. So there is a lot of extra space in here, but maybe I'll try to fill it up a little more next year, but wanted to start out a little bit small this year since we're trying to build our house and have a lot of stuff going on. So just a little update on my Arizona desert garden. Thank you so much for joining us. There's a lot more coming up, so be sure to subscribe.